So a quick question for you. When does a CDN stop being a CDN? How about when it adds in streaming options? And that's exactly what Bunny CDN did not too long ago. Now, it still has all the CDN options in it, but the streaming features and the ability to access files and use those on your sites to download direct from Bunny CDN is, in my opinion, a bit of a game changer. What makes it even more exciting is just how cheap it actually is. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I've started using it, how you can start using Bunny CDN for yourself, and some of the options you have available to you. So let's hop over into Bunny CDN and take a look at what I'm talking about. So if we hop over into Bunny CDN and go ahead and log into my account, you see we've got the dashboard. And the dashboard gives us a load of information, including how much money we've got in our account, the amount of traffic and so on that's gone through it, any pull zones we've got, storage zones, those kinds of things. Now, I've already covered how to get started with Bunny CN, CDN, and I'll link the video in the corner so you can check that out, or maybe that corner, one or the other. Now, if you want to see exactly how I use all of this myself, again, I'll link to a video which I released very, very recently about my entire LMS, or Learning Management System stack, because it focuses quite heavily on the usage of delivering the video content and the downloadable content by using Bunny CDN. And I'll give you a quick recap on that in this video. Okay, so when you log in, if we take a look at the left-hand side, you've got some new features if you haven't logged in for a while. The key one in this example is Stream. Now, if we open up Stream, this now allows us to create folders and organize everything if you want to, which obviously would make sense if you have a lot of video content you want to stream from the Bunny CDN sort of network. You can see I've already gone ahead and created a couple of folders for some courses that I'm currently running. Let's open up the lifecycle. If we open that up, inside there, you can see I've got some subfolders, but this now gives us all of the options we have for dealing with uploading files, managing files, configuring the player, the different options you want, encoding options, those kinds of things. So let's just go through these very quickly in order. You can see at the moment we've got the videos and inside there I've got collections. And if we open up one of these collections, for example, this initial contact, you can see there's all of the videos, gives me information about each of the videos, how much uh, sort of storage space is being used for these and so on. Now, that's just the management side of things. And you can see we can create collections, we can upload videos by using the options in the top corner. If we hop over into the player section, this is where we can customize things and make sure that everything is on brand and in keeping with wherever we're going to embed these files. So you can set your primary color, the UI language. If you want to insert some custom HTML into the head, you can do that. You can even configure the way that the captions are going to be used if you upload captions to your videos. You can then go ahead and configure the player controls themselves. So you can add in play and pause, big play buttons, settings, captions, so you can make this as feature packed or as minimal as you want it to be. Now you can see what I've set up and if I want to enable something else, I simply need to check it and then just hit update and those options are now enabled on all the videos. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you want to, if you are part of an advertising network and you want to use something like Bunny CDN, you can put in your vast uh, sort of details inside you. Now, to be eligible to work with the vast advertising network, you do need to have a huge amount of traffic going through your site. So this is probably something that much larger channels are going to have access and a need for, but it's good to see this being included in here as well. Next up, we've got the encoding options, and this is where you can configure the different resolutions you want your files to be in, and this then will sort of filter down through to the amount of storage space that you're going to use on your plan. Now, the nice thing about the storage space in this, it is literally pennies on the dollar. Really, really small amounts of money. So much so that I don't really think that there's anything out there right now, and please do correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, that can really come close to what Bunny CDN actually offers for the streaming side of things. Now, let's take a quick look at this. You've got your keep your original file. So this allows you when you upload a file to the Buddy CDN network, if you want to keep a copy of that on the server. Now for general use case, you should have your own backups of any of the files that you upload. So this is something that will take up space, but in reality, most users, unless you maybe do this for clients, you don't really have a need to use that. So you can very easily disable that option should you want to. And again, inside here, it is literally a case of you check it, it makes the change for you. So I'm not gonna worry about keeping original files, I don't need those. You've also got enable early play, which allows you to 
well, basically you speed up the delivery, but this is kind of reliant upon some of the other options that you choose inside this particular section. And then you've got the MP4 fallback. This allows you to deliver to devices that don't support the file formats that are being used and fall back to the MP4 fallback. There is a caveat to this, as you can see, if this is enabled, videos will be encoded into the MP4 format and limited to 700, sorry, 720p resolution. It'll increase the encoding time, which for most use cases, unless you're trying to put something up and get it out the door as quick as possible, is not going to be an issue. Online encoding is part of streaming and something you get used to. Uh, but it does increase the compatibility with older devices, but it doesn't support the HLS streaming. And this is where you have your best level of security on your file. So if you are delivering something like learning management or training material that you don't want to be easily copied, then this is something you would generally probably want to avoid having enabled. But like I say, it does increase compatibility. So depending upon what you're delivering, you may want to enable or disable that option. Test it out, check it out. Some older Apple devices and things may play this better than some of the new formats that are being supported. Next up, you've got your enabled resolutions. And this is when you upload a file to Buddy CDN, it encodes various different versions. So then when it's delivered via the CDN, it can deliver the right resolution to the right types of device. And you can see this goes from 240p right the way up to 4K. Now for my example, I don't really need things like 240, 360 or 480. So I'm gonna disable those, but I am gonna enable 720 through to 1440 because I generally upload videos in 1440, which is basically 2K. You can see it gives you the data rates that are being used inside there as well. If you want to watermark your videos and you want to do it directly inside just your original source files are never touched, it's only done inside Buddy CDN, you can do that by simply uploading your watermark and then you can position that on the video screen whatever you want. Great, like I say, if you want to keep the original files untouched, you don't want to burn that in, you can use this to do it for you. So once that's been sort of set up, all the changes are kind of live changes as you make them, so they will auto-save in the background. If we hop over and take a look at the pricing, this gives us two kinds of tiers to work with. We've got the standard tier and we've got the high volume tier. Now the standard tier is basically for smaller websites where you want the fastest delivery. So this kind of accelerates the delivery, which in all honesty isn't slow in the slightest anyway. I find in my testing, you pretty much click the play button and it's starting to stream straight away. But if you do have a need for that, and you see ad delivery and, and file delivery, it increases the speed of that, then you can hop onto the standard tier, which is more expensive for, per terabyte. If you look at the pricing structure, it's effectively double per terabyte, but you're talking $10 versus $5, which really is next to nothing. You know, really, really simple. High volume is the default option inside you. And like I say, for most use cases, most scenarios, that's going to be more than enough. And that's at $5 per terabyte, next to nothing. Looking at your security, this is where you can come in and you can apply DRM or Digital Rights Management, I believe it stands for. You can enable direct play. So this enables anybody with the URL for the video to play it which obviously you don't want, because if someone can access that, you want to lock this down for your training and so on, then you might want to disable that option. So I'm going to disable that for my particular use case. Then you can add in blocked domains. So if you see somewhere is selling one of your courses and it's a, a domain, you can go in, you could block that and the videos won't play back on there. You can also do it in reverse. You can just have this set up so they have to use just specific specified websites. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can set this up to have a wildcard, so it doesn't matter whether it's www dot or non www, or you've got subdomains and things like that. You can also block direct URL file access. So this removes the ability for people to access the URL to the video when it's been embedded into your site if you have no other kinds of security. And then you've got things like embed view token authentication and CDN token authentication. For a lot of use cases, that's probably not going to be something you'd have to worry about. If we jump over to the storage, this is something you set up right at the beginning when you create your folders. And this is where you can choose where you want your content to be delivered from. So when it comes to working with Bunny CDN, uh, Falkenstein, which is in Europe, I believe, uh, possibly Germany, somewhere around that kind of region, uh, that's the default. So that's the option you cannot disable, but you can, if you want to, enable or disable geo-replication. And that basically means 
other storage locations around the world will have duplicates of all of the files you want to deliver via the CDN, and they will get delivered from that relevant location to the closest you know, sort of user. You can see I've got set up for the US East and West Coast. I've also got uh, Sydney, which is Australia. Asia, I don't really get a huge amount of traffic from that location, but I would say with CDNs like this, they're pretty solid distribution anyway, but you can enable and disable these. And each one of these includes a cost incurred, but you can see it's like two cents, two cents, three cents per gigabyte. It's nothing, it really is next to nothing. But you can, like I say, uh, set these up right at the beginning, but once you've set them up, they are basically locked in. So just need to know that you'd make your decision right at the beginning. So it's important that you make that decision and then you're kind of stuck with it. Otherwise, you have to delete everything and create it from the start. And this is just the way Bunny CDN works, unfortunately. Then you've got statistical information, so you can find out the number of views, the watch time, those kinds of things. So you can monitor to see how much traffic is going through uh, the sort of CDN. And like I say, this will have an implication upon any of the costs. Then you've got your, IP, uh, your API, and then finally, you can delete your library if you want to. So this is how easy it is to manage all those different sources. And then once you've done that, you can come into your stream and you can manage your videos. And let's just say you want to grab a video to do something with it. All we need to do is click to open that video up. And this now gives us access to all of the information about that video. So this will show you your preview. You can upload a custom thumbnail or you can select a thumbnail from the video itself. In this example, I've uploaded a custom thumbnail. You can add a VTT caption. So if you want to enable captions as part of your video, which in a lot of cases, especially with education, can be very useful if you've got a very broad audience. You can upload that inside here and you can also specify the language or languages that are associated with that file. Then if we take a look at the right hand side, we've got the title of this particular video, the video ID, direct play, whether that's enabled, disabled, and you can do this on a video by video basis or globally your HLS playlist URL, the thumbnail URL, and your preview. And then what we have underneath is the embed code options. And we can configure a few things. We can set this to be responsive, which is great if you are delivering to a mobile, tablet, and a desktop-based audience. You can set this to auto place. For this example, I'll disable that. And you can also set this to be preloading. So this will automatically start to load this in as soon as someone accesses the page with your embedded video on it. And you can loop it and you can mute it. And then underneath that, you've got your actual embed code. So all you need to do, copy the clipboard, and then you can paste that into any way that you want to use it. So for my example, Thrivecart is what I'm using to create my learning management. Like I say, if you want to check out the video, you can take a look at it, wherever it's going to be, and linked in the description below. So all I need to do now is go into one of my lessons, click on edit, and then I can just insert a video. So I'm going to grab a video, drop that inside there, Select it, and then you see, drop in my embed code. So I'm gonna paste that embed code inside there. I'll expand this out to be 100%, and I'm done. You can't see it inside here, but this is a limitation of the way that Thrive Can't Learn Plus actually works. So we click on done on that, and I publish this. We can go and take a look at this, and we can preview it. So now when I preview this particular lesson, you can see there's my embedded video. Let me just mute this a second, and I'll hit play and I'm playing immediately. You can see that was immediate. There was no wait time or anything at all. And I'm on Wi-Fi at the moment. Decent enough connection, but you can see hopefully that it's incredibly quick to start playing. So that's something that's very, very useful. That's the, the way you deal with working with video files. So let's just go back out of that. Now, let's just say you have other kinds of files like PDFs, digital downloads, those kinds of things, and you want to use Bunny CDN to deliver those. Well, you can do that as well. If we come into the storage option, inside there you can see I've got a folder called Course Downloads. Now this is set up as a storage zone. So once we've set that up, you can simply open it up and inside there, you can see I've broken things down again using that similar folder structure so I can break it down to the courses that I have available. And if I just open this up, there's the link to the file, there's the file itself and I can just use that. And again, I've got options down the left hand side I can choose where my connected pull zones are. I can delete zones, replication, FTP, API access, lots of different options. And I can connect pull zones directly inside you. So pull zones are basically just locations in where you store actual files to deliver those to a site. And when you set up Bunny CDN, you set up pull zones as part of the entire startup process. So once you've created that, you can then link that up and you've then got downloadable files. Really, really easy to set up and work with. 
So that's basically how you go about using Bunny CDN as a not only a content delivery network, but also a video streaming service and a file delivery setup. Now you can check out how I've done all of this and how I've integrated it into my entire sort of learning management process by checking out this video next and the links in the description below. Now, if you'd like to see a video covering Bunny CDN in a lot more detail, please do let me know in the comment section below. But hopefully you found this video useful. It's opened your eyes to some of the things you can use Bunny CDN for, and you can see why it's so much better than some of the other methods you might use for video delivery and so on, where cost is an implication and you want something that's reliable, fast, and not going to break the bank. Now, I've got no affiliation with this. This is all tools that I'm using and paying for myself. But let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Are you using Bunny CDN in this way or did you not know about it? Would you consider using it? I'd love to know and get your feedback. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.